Well, that's the end of our summer. It's been uh, dribbling all morning. Bought a paddling pool yesterday for the kids. How long were we in it for, Ruffy? Two minutes? How long? At least an hour. At least an hour? I don't think so. Is Ellie coming? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my snuffer's still there from Saturday. It's sitting there on the window, so. I left it outside. It's drizzling a little bit. A little bit of rain right now. Come on, young lady. I'm not going in the shop with the pipe. There's the cottage. <coughs> and down the lane there is the farm behind our place where the sheep are. We walked down there the other day, took us all the way around, came all the way back, and there's a church right there on the right hand side. It's actually a very old, a very old church. <coughs> uh, this is literally outside that. This is our place, and this is Budget and Scarpa. <laughs> I love that name, Budget and Scarpa. <laughs> Because budget and scarfer means, budget means do a rubbish job and then scarfer run off. But look what they do, they cut and shut specialists, so they're not quite about it. They basically put cars together, pieces of cars together. Anybody want some? Uh, Vintage garden tools for sale. See, that's one thing you see in the countryside is people are not worried about people pinching stuff. For sale and other stuff. Got an old pitcher, spade, wheel, fork, an axe. And look at this. You see this little thing here? That in the in Victorian times? The bath. Little kids would, although that one is probably maybe not big enough, I'm not sure, but but certainly that kind of thing. The children would have a bath in there. Um, I don't think you should be doing that. Can you put it down, please? Put it down. It's not even ours, you shouldn't even be touching it. What's that company? Lift up that spade there. Plow. Bedford. It's a Bedford plow. Interesting. Bedford used to make trucks here in the UK. We've got a it's a wheel. candlestick and something NCS 1993. Where? Some people staring. Let me stare. I don't know about hundreds, but it could, uh, the, the bathtub could be. It could be 100 years old quite easily. That's the village shop. And the rolling English hills in the background. That's what we like. Right, hang on, car coming. Oops, sorry. Your exhaust sorted out, mate. Sounds like your ace bag. Yes, the exhaust. Have you got to make chickens? English country garden. And they're nice. Tiny little cottages. And that one's one single one, but look at those. One, two, three, four cottages in that building. Ooh. And doggy bags. Doggy bags? Doggy bags. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fresh lettuce. Choose your own. 50 pence each. <coughs> Seen better days, what? Sandwiches, coffee to go, hot chocolate. Extra large dog bags. Where did we see the... Uh, pardon? We're going to go to that hopefully. Cooley Memorial Hall. Car boot sale. Next Sunday. We went to one yesterday, but it wasn't much. All right, let's go in. So we just went in the shop. I didn't take any uh, footage. Oh, it's a post office as well. And uh, so basically they're open half a day each day. And it's basically a village shop, but the village is really quite small nowadays. Um, and it doesn't really support a shop. So what they've done is, is they've put together a group of volunteers. And they basically keep it open till one o'clock in the afternoon. But they're all volunteers, they don't get paid. And there's a group of 50 volunteers who all take turns to man the shop. Or woman the shop. And that way they keep it going. And uh, I thought that was very cool. It's really a struggle, I think, to keep village life going in some places. Where, uh, look at that, isn't that nice? Um, where the population is dwindling and certainly the younger generations are moving out moving into towns where they can get work that's uh, I suppose in inverted commas progress you can hear the bells but it's about five minutes slow it goes every hour but it's now Five past nine in the morning. Okay. And it always goes five minutes past the hour. For some reason, it goes at night as well. I heard it last night about three, four in the morning. Didn't sleep very well last night. LCS 626 with some OGS. Now I want to show you one of the gravestones here. Here we go. So, I mentioned this. Um, maybe I, I think I recorded a video the other day, but I didn't actually upload it. But if you have a look at that gravestone there, you can see in relief a biplane just there right there and you see a, a biplane there a world war one biplane type thing um, oh it was in a live i was talking about it it was in it was during london calling um but the dates we couldn't quite what date did you say it was it was 18 something or 19 something my daughter's far sighted and she could see it. I couldn't see it. Oh, you've got the binoculars there. Go around to where on that side. Go around where? Just, Khani um, will show you which uh, which one to look at and see if you can see a date or maybe let her look at it. Don't squabble, please. So, I forgot to bring my binoculars. Those are 7 by 50 binoculars, which are perfect for sky uh, watching the night sky um but i've got to bring them went to the uh, car boot sale yesterday and i picked up a pair of zenith ones which pretty good condition uh with coated optics pretty old but not bad they're not perfect but they're not bad and uh but they cost me 20 quid so for 20 quid i figure it's enough for me to enjoy whilst on holiday and it was, oops, sorry, and it was a worthwhile purchase. Can you see the date? You have to turn the middle wheel to focus, yeah?
1923, okay. So that is First World War. Kind of era. So some of these are quite recent. Some of them are really, really old. There's a pheasant walking around there. Oh, it's really raining now. We're going to have to head home in a minute. Well, there's no pavement. There's no sidewalk. Yeah, this one's 1886. That one's 1786. Which one? 1886. This one? Which one? 1786. The one in the middle there. Right. I don't think I can zoom in that much. Hmm? Low dryer. Low dryer. I was just looking at this um, sort of castle like feature. That's got to be a good few hundred years old, if not more. That's a pretty impressive uh, bit of architecture. Old looking piece of architecture. Well, it started to rain, so we decided to carry on exploring by car. Did we go down this one? Uh, no. You did? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. It's got all the glass now, isn't it? Right. Just seeing the same guy you said, I'm not a whatever you said you were. Some of them are modern buildings and some of them are converted barns or farm outhouses. And this one here, you can see was a barn. I don't remember it being a dead end. We were, oh yeah, we were able to walk through. So walking through that gate would take us, that would take us back to the road. But obviously we can't, it's a private road. This house opposite is interesting because it's got it's two sections of the house and it's connected by the roof in the middle but um, I think they're actually two different houses but it's just a drive-through I mean it's like a small private estate which has been sold off but the actual estate is private probably jointly owned by all of the uh, homeowners here screen car phone mount that I usually use so it's a little bit lower hence you've got a little bit of the uh, the car wind the car frame the windscreen frame the a frame in the picture I'm afraid visitors car park what is this place Yeah. 
it's a riding school. I wonder if we could go horse riding here. It's a stables, Walcott stables. Yeah, you can. It had a picture of a horse riding. Yeah, I wonder if they um, do riding sessions for kids. Maybe they do. You know what we're doing for the next two weeks. You reckon? We should go down that road that way that we came to the house. You know, it was like a, it was like five minutes of like street road in this thing that went flowing down. Oh yeah, look, there's horses. Where's the horse? There's a white horse, you see. You see the, the stables, they've got all their doors open. You see a white horse? Oh, there's a little horsey. Yeah, there's a little horsey. Oh, it's got a special... <coughs> stuff on the floor so their feet are comfortable. It's called a paddock. It's rocks. And they go for a little trot. It's, it's rocks. And so, well, wherever it is, it's comfortable for them. It's obviously designed for their horseshoes. Um, and that's where they start to get them to learn how to walk and then how to canter, which is like a, a slow run. Sometimes they have uh, obstacles, you know, things that they have to jump over. They train, they train them for show jumping. But I don't think that one was doing that. That's just the stables where they look after horses. Like the paddock is there just so they can exercise and run around a bit. Let's go. A squirrel. It looked brown, that one. I haven't seen it brown. No, it wasn't. It was a rabbit. It, it was a rabbit. No, it was a brown rabbit. That's the first rabbit I've seen this uh, holidays. And last year we saw loads of them, literally yeah, all over the place. Yet. Looks like we're coming towards another village. Either that or a farm or something. Yeah, I think it's a farm or something. It looks very modern. Scenery. Yeah. This road is uh, it's leading to a farm. I don't know if it's a private road or not. I didn't see the words private road. We'll find out.
Brook Farm. Interesting. each other they just find a slightly wider part of the road and then everybody starts to use it you see this little bit there on the right where the hay is yeah so what people do is they just go into the side like that and then car after car after car does it and eventually it becomes a wider area and then people just use that it becomes an established spot here again here you see on the right and then people just use that for Sometimes they deliberately do it. I know oh that's a turn off. But you can see this is uh, because it's a steep where the road comes down. You see this grit? You see that there? Oh, yeah, the so yellow. Go that's for when it gets icy or snowy. They cover it with grit so vehicles don't come flying yeah, into the road. Show you that view again. Can I just pass it a little? 
Hang on a sec. Who's that? Is that? No, hey, hey. Scary. Oh, it's high. Oh, it's so scary. Check that out. The second movement from Wojak's canopy. Beautiful. Where did you turn to the right? Really? Alright, to answer your question about how people get that rich. Well, I'll give you an example. Say a man gets a job in a greengrocer, alright? You know what a greengrocer is? That's right. So, say he's uh, 16 or 17 years old, just come out of school, he got his first job. Goes to the market in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, how much your power snips? How much your tongs and your pots? Why did I use that example? Because that's what I did. Really? One of my first jobs I worked for at Greengrocers, I used to go to the market in Spitalfields, which is in the east end of London, I used to go at 3 o'clock in the morning to get the best produce and uh, it was good fun actually. It was hard to get up at that time but it was fun. So you buy it and then you take it to your shop and you make it look nice, you display it, you clean it, you shine it, you make sure you've got your best apples on the top row and then you sell them for more than you bought, bought them for, that's your profit. And hopefully you make enough profit to pay for the rent of the shop, pay for any workers that you have and so on. That wasn't my problem because I was just a worker at the time. That was my boss's problem. So say I'm a worker, I work in a greengrocer's and I work there say for a year or two, go to the market, buy the fruit, put the fruit on the shelf, sell it, people come into the shop, I learn all about it, how to buy the fruit, when to buy the fruit, how much to pay for the fruit and then I get a bit older and I think you know what, I can do this myself, I don't need to work for him. I know everything I need to know about it, so I'm going to start my own shop. I'm just giving you the story. So I go out and find a place where I think it's going to be a, a busy spot, and I rent a shop. And I'll go to the market. Obviously, I'm, I might have to have to borrow money to start the business, or maybe I've worked long enough and didn't waste my money, saved enough money to go and buy my first bit of fruit to pay the first few months' rent. It takes time to make a profit. People have to get to know your shop. So you don't make a profit straight away. And hopefully if I do my job well, make money, and then I start to make enough profit to maybe open another shop. And maybe over a period of a few years, I can open a chain of shops. Maybe I'll have four or five shops. And then I'll think to myself, you know what? I've got four or five shops. Maybe I'll sell the business and sell the business, maybe you'll be able to sell it for a few hundred thousand because it's making money, each branch is making money. You get a few hundred thousand pounds, maybe, if you're lucky, and you can invest it and you buy a property. You go to a really, um, you look around and find a property which is maybe a little bit beaten up, dilapidated, which means it's, it's well, you have to look around, you look at ad adverts, you, look, uh, you drive around, you look at, um, you speak to estate agents, people who deal in property, and you try and find a property which is a good price, but you know that if you do it up, you fix it up, you can sell it and make more money. And then you make a bit more profit. So now you've got, instead of two, three hundred thousand, maybe you've got five hundred thousand. You buy the property, you fix it up, you sell it for maybe a hundred thousand pounds more. Yeah. So now you've got six hundred thousand or five hundred thousand pounds. What bird is that? Oh, it's just a pigeon. Now basically you keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually you can end up having millions of pounds. Not everybody does that and not everybody can do that. But we that's... had it at 270 billion. Okay, so you t take somebody like... Uh, those are exceptional. Those are not... Uh, so it's not, it's not the norm. Billion. Well, let's take, for instance, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon is well known. That's Jeff Bezos. Jeff. So look at Amazon. Guy had an idea 
where he's going to let everybody else sell their products. He doesn't even have to invest. He doesn't have to buy anything. He lets everybody else sell their products. But like he makes a website where everybody can load their products onto his website, and he takes a cut. He takes a uh, commission on every on everything that gets sold. And okay, it's grown from there, and then they have their own products, and they have uh, it's huge. I mean, it's worldwide. And then if you imagine almost every country in the world spending millions of pounds every day on his website you can understand why he's a billionaire it's quite that makes a lot of sense but those are exceptional you know things like that microsoft apple these are world leaders in a certain thing they capture the imagination of the world and their products become just something which is iconic it's something which it's just everybody knows what it is but that's those are exceptional circumstances but anybody could do it you know it doesn't mean that don't bother trying because it's only a few people in the world who do that <laughs> because those few people were just anybody they weren't anything special they're human beings they have the same blood going through their veins as you do they're nothing special but they had the guts and they had an idea and they, they worked hard they, they didn't get there without working hard that's for sure Every millionaire has worked very, very hard to the point where usually um, it affects their life, it affects their, 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 their mental sort of stability because they're, they're completely obsessed with their business. You have to be in order to become a multi-billionaire. That's, um, it's just the way it is. So it's not necessary to become a multi-billionaire. You know, people want to be successful, but you don't want it to completely take over your life. You know, a lot of these people, they, they lose their personal life, they lose their, their relationships, their families, because everything comes before, the business becomes before everything. So they've kind of lost the, the balance of life. You know, in life you have to have a balance. You've got to balance things between um, enjoyment, relaxation, paying the bills, of course. That is extremely important and it's right up there um, at the top of your list. But it has to be at the same time as maintaining a good family life and be, you know having fun with your family and having a loving relationship with your family and not putting everything in front of your family. That's, it's, it's, I always say you have to have a balance. Everything has to have a balance. And at the same time, you can't play all day long because then you can't pay the bills. So you have to work. But you have to make sure that you, you do everything. You do a bit of everything. And uh, if you do that, then you're also happier yourself. Well, I've got no idea where we're going, so I'm going to have to turn the video off so that we can uh, get ways on. Try get home by myself. Try get home by myself. I have no idea. Just turn it on. No, I don't know which ways we've turned and gone. Let's just try. Days are gone. I used to do everything with a map. But nowadays. I'd be surprised if the map companies are still updating as much as they used to because they just don't sell anymore. Not that many anyway. The map companies. Because everybody uses um, Waze. Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever. All right, this is a bit silly. I'm going to have to pause the video. All right, so we've been driving for about 20 minutes or so. Is it 40 minutes? No. All right, so it's about 25 minutes. It turns out we're just two and a half miles away from our house. That's how it is in the countryside. You can just go and go and go, and you could literally be going in circles. The house can be literally close by, which is what's happened here. Anyhow, we're going to head back home. Hope you've enjoyed the drive. Hope we haven't bored the socks off you. Have a great day. I hope you're having better weather than we are. But I'm not going to complain because yesterday and the day before it was too hot. And that's the way it goes here in the UK. So, enjoy the rest of your week. Catch you on the next one.